Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Four Investors Podcast, where Wall Street meets Main Street. I'm Andrew Gay, along with Gilbert Pies, and we are the Texas Hill Country Advisors, independent financial advisors based in the beautiful Texas Hill Country. We discuss the latest from financial markets, the economy, and general investor education. We cut through the Wall Street noise and focus on what's important for your financial future. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Gilbert, hi. How you doing? Hello there, Andrew. I'm doing fantastic. Yes, mainly because it's Friday. We're we yes. sailing off into the weekend here. It's almost, uh, let's see, it's a little after 2.30 here, um, Friday, February 23rd. We're watching the uh, markets close out a wacky week. Uh, it's been a seesaw week, except for yesterday. The markets were up strongly. They were down the two days before. Uh, the narrative around the Fed cutting interest rates is, is seesawed back and forth, too. At first, you know, we had a lot of optimism going into the beginning of 2024. And now all of a sudden that seems to have kind of stalled and hit a brick wall because of the hot inflation number that we got last week. So uh, I'm using all that to kind of update us on where we're at in the markets, but also lead into what we want to talk about today. So before we proceed, do you have anything that specific that you want to mention about the markets? Yeah, you know, I, I, I agree exactly with what you were saying just a second ago. But, uh, you know, one of the uh, X factors, I think, that's uh, happened for the market over the past few weeks is earnings. Earnings amazingly have turned out very nicely, for, especially for some of the bigger bellwether tech names. Uh, you think back to Meta a couple weeks ago when they came out with their earnings, or or formerly known as Facebook. Their earnings came out; they were substantially better than they everybody thought. Stock surged twenty percent and dragged the rest of the Nasdaq up with it. And then yesterday, right. we had earnings from Nvidia big AI player in the technology space. And it turns out there was a lot of, I think, fear that NVIDIA's earnings were not going to be that great. And it turns out that, wow, they were pretty fantastic. Yes. And the stock surged. In, in fact, I read a statistic in the Wall Street Journal that said NVIDIA had the largest one-day cap gain or, or gain in their stock value in one day for any one stock ever in the history of the stock wow. market. Um, and I, I don't remember the number, but it was, I don't know, something crazy like $285 billion or something. Well, and I, I think added that, to the market value in one day. That's the, that I think is a great display of the feeding frenzy, the gold rush, whatever you want to label it as that, that is AI. So, sure. you know, people are talking about that. It's the next biggest thing since like the internet, um, it's just going to revolutionize businesses and how businesses talk to each other and supply chains and management, all this stuff. But uh, we're not we're not there yet. So I, I understand the optimism in the, the hype. Um, but but for now, that's that's kind of kind of all it is. I think the earnings kind of solidified that idea like, oh, man, uh, th this is real. This yes. Is, this, and that 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 thought led into the uh, the run up that we saw yesterday. Yeah. So, you, so you're getting this push and pull in the market which is typical, but the 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 pool right now is, oh no, the feds aren't going to cut interest rates in March. Oh no, they're not going to cut interest rates in June. Oh no, maybe they don't cut interest rates at all this year. That's, that's the pool, I think, because the market at the end of last year was anticipating interest rate cuts, imminent interest rate cuts. The You can, you can attribute a lot of the gains at the end of the year to the anticipation that the feds were going to cut rates and the market surged in, in hopes of that. But as you said, it ran into this brick wall and decided, uh Oh, maybe, maybe we're too excited about that. And that's not going to happen. And I think some of the inflation data, there you go. Thank you. Yes. Some of the inflation data has indicated that, Hey, wait a minute, inflation is coming down, but, but it's not back to the 2% mark. And Oh, by the way, we had this little bounce last month which yeah. really caused the market to freak out a little bit. Um, but earnings for especially the technology companies has been pulling the market uh, up and pulling it higher and dragging everybody else along with them. Uh, and and that's, that's certainly a positive, but you know, there's, there's kind of a middle ground in there somewhere. And um, I'm not sure where that is. Uh, I, I, if I had to guess uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of a cool off in the market over the next few months until we figure out exactly where interest rates are headed. Yeah. Unless earnings continue to be fantastic. And I think you were talking earlier this morning about the performance of the three major indexes, the Dow, the S and P and the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ is, is outperforming. Yes. By a 
double digits, no? Or, or it's almost it's a little it's over nine percent year yeah. to date. Uh, the Dow's over four, um, and the S and P's in between. Yes. Yeah, so, so the Nasdaq is up about twice what the Dow and the S and P are up, but that's because of the earnings from some of these big tech companies. And we'll see. You know, we got we're kind of winding down earnings season. There will, there's always more earnings that trickle in towards the end of earnings season. It's that full month basically after the quarter closes. We'll have to wait a little bit longer before we get the next uh, batch of earnings or earnings seasons. But we get more economic data between now and then. The Fed meets again a couple of times, so we'll we'll continue to see how that narrative develops. So I think talking about some of that run up in Nvidia is a great segue into kind of what we wanted to touch on today. We just had someone asking us about, you know, NVIDIA this morning and uh, what we thought about it. Should they buy it? That kind of thing. And, and you know, it's sitting at an all time high along with some of the rest of the indexes. Uh, and it's really tough, I think, from our perspective to think about uh, maybe looking at that as an option to, to buy something like that when it's at an all time high. So uh, I, I say all that to lay the foundation to say what we're going to talk about today is we we don't give a lot of thought about who we take advice from. And frankly, uh, there's so much information in the internet age nowadays, especially with social media, we get inundated with- and When with, you say we, we're, you're talking about, not you and me. No, right? you're all You're talking of about us. the general pop- yes, public. Yes, yes, okay. we, we. Um, and of course, you know- The royal we. <laughs> the royal we, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and of course, I follow a lot of accounts on social media that are financially related just to see what's going on out there. Not, I know that not everybody else uh, you know, here, at least in this country, probably doesn't live in the same pockets of the internet that you and I do. Uh, but I would be willing to bet that they've seen. You're in some really dark pockets too. Yeah. I want you to know that. <laughs> I, I, I kind of know where you're at. Based there, on your but... Reddit videos. <laughs> no, uh, mine are just funny. Uh, yours are dark. I don't know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so we just like to, we want to expand on this thought a little bit. We've had a lot of these conversations here recently. It never fails that we get brought some kind of video or some kind of um, talking head to, that's that's discussing something about either Armageddon related or certain big companies going under, or the banking system's going to fail, or any kind of variation of that. The best, quote unquote, oh, best yeah. investment to be in right now. The only one. Yes. The only one to be in. The only <laughs> thing to be in. Yeah. Um, you know. So so we're going to kind of expand on that today. So where do you have a a place you want to start with that? Yeah, let, let me let me give you a, an example. <clears throat> it it's it's never hard to find an idea. Everybody has an idea. In fact, if you came into our office today and you wanted an idea, you and me, Andrew, you and I have ideas in our back pocket all the time that that we think are are reasonable options for people to consider. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best one for you. Right. Um, and and unfortunately. Due to the prevalence of social media, there's a lot of people out there that have no business making any kind of recommendation about anything financial related to other people because you you have to recognize that when you think about social media or TV ads or even somebody talking to you face to face, unless they know about your personal situation, it's really difficult to tell you what the quote unquote best investment is. Uh, there, there's so many examples and, and, and I just want to pick on like commodities in particular. Gold is one that, that we get approached with all the time. And I love, we love talking about that. Yes. You, you know, is, is there anything wrong with gold? No, there's nothing wrong with gold as an investment. However, you, you have to recognize that the people that are touting gold as a, the only or the safest or the best investment are, are not really looking at it from the standpoint of how, what kind of utility that gives you. Um, uh, what one example is, let's say you put all your money into gold. Why would you do that? You can't use gold to buy your groceries. You can't use gold to pay your cell phone bill. You can't use gold to pay your mortgage. You can't do that. But this guy on TV said, said, yes, I know, I know. The, the other thing too is, uh, and, and and I have a example of this exactly that happened here locally. Uh, people will tell you, oh, you have to put your money in gold because the U.S. dollar is worth nothing and it's going to collapse. And 
the economy is going to crater. And when it craters, the only thing worth anything is going to be gold. <laughs> okay. Let, assuming you believe that, this person is is suggesting that you buy gold. And, oh, it just so happens that they sell gold. Hey, yeah. pretty cool. How do I buy it? What do I buy it with? Exactly. Oh, so, that thing you said that was going to be worthless? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So, so if somebody comes to you and they're offering an investment, Gold in particular is, is what I'm picking on today. Um, and, and they're telling you that what you have is, is worthless or, or going to be worth less over time. Then why would they trade you what they have that they claim is going to be the best thing ever for something that you have that they claim is going to be the worst thing ever? Why would they do that? It doesn't make any sense. Right. So why would you take my green U.S. dollars for the gold that you say is the only thing that people should be investing in, why would you take my dollars? It doesn't make sense. Just intuitively, from that standpoint, it doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm not saying that the U.S. dollar, the value of the U.S. dollar won't fluctuate up and down. It does every single day. We don't recognize that, but it does because it trades on an exchange and, and the value of the U.S. dollar does fluctuate. Um, I'm not saying that it can't get eroded over time due to inflation. We've seen that over the past few years. And I'm not saying that gold is a horrible investment. It's a reasonable investment, but it's not the place for all of your investing. Yes. And so you, you just have to remember that whoever's touting something else, what are their motivations behind it? Mm. And and does it is it suitable for your situation? And it may be, it may not be, but it's always good to have a a thought in your own mind about what is this person telling me? Why are they telling me this? And and if I followed their advice, what's in it for them? Yeah. Um, and 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 there's there's not a wrong answer to any of those questions. It's just a way for you to analyze if what they're telling you is something that you should act on. Yeah, and I think that I've mentioned this before on here, but uh, I picked up a quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson. He said that one of the most important things that he didn't think that we really teach in, in schools is that we should always ask the question, like, why is it this level of information, whatever I'm being presented with, whether it's through my phone, through the TV, on a piece of paper, someone's handing me something, someone's at my door trying to, you know, knocking on my door, whatever. Why is it that level of information that's making it to me? And a lot of the times, if it's coming through my phone, especially on social media, um, or on the TV, it's because those people are selling something, um, and they're they're incentivized to say whatever they need to say to separate you from your money. Um, and we have to remember that. And and also at the same time, just in the interest of full disclosure, we're financial advisors. Okay, we run a business. We do this podcast as part of our our marketing efforts. And at the end of the day, yeah, we're still trying to sell people something. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Because we're licensed financial advisors, we're on the hook for disclosing all of those conflicts of interest and telling you, hey, yeah, we are trying to sell you something. Oh, and by the way, here's the cost involved. And this is how much it's going to cost you, right? We're also on the hook for, for having uh, truth and facts based in what we're saying right. um, um, to back all that up. If if you're one of those people just out there trying to sell something and you're not a licensed financial advisor, you can just say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, it can be as false, as untrue, uh, d deep fake. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. There's not really any repercussions for it. That's right. And and another example that I have is, is here in the recent uh, week or two, I had a customer come to my office and say, listen, I'm really, really concerned about a particular issue. And, and I said, well, well, why, why is it now all of a sudden a big issue? Well, for him, he owns quite a few shares, thousands of dollars worth of a particular company stock. And his son had sent him a TikTok video about this particular company. And this person that was talking about this company was really dogging the company. And, and granted, a lot of the problems that this company was having are self-inflicted. Uh, and and yes, a lot of the problems that they had were were problems that all of us would find, you know, disgusting and um, pretty sad and disappointing. But that doesn't mean that that company's going broke. And he was very concerned. I mean, very concerned that his entire investment in this company was going to go to zero. And and when I looked at the video, this person, uh, one of the first things he said is, "I am not a financial advisor." 
<laughs> However, he proceeded to then tell you why this company was so horrible. Um, he he mixed in a bunch of truth, some news stories about this company and the trouble they'd been in in the past and goofy, stupid things that they've done. So he, it kind of sounded like he knew what he was talking about because he knew the numbers and exactly, about exactly. how much in penalties they paid he, and some of their issues. Yeah, he right? also mixed in some true news stories about a couple of other institutions that were similar that had problems. And and his the gist of his story was this this company is next. This company is the next one to fail. And if you're invested or somehow have any relationship with these people, you need to get out. Um and and if you if you listen to him, uh it, it was it was really obvious that he he to me anyway, that he had a personal axe to grind about this company. Um and that's cool. Guess what? I have a person likes to grind against that company too, but for a whole different reason. But I, I'm not going to go around and slam them be, and and tell say things that are not true and that are not accurate. Uh, you know, so so you I, I tried to explain to the customer. Listen, you have to be very mindful about who you take advice from. And and what one thing I want to talk about the downsides of social media is that if you are a uh, negative Nancy, right? If you are concerned about a particular issue and you start watching videos around that issue, guess what's going to get served up to you More every this. time that you start looking at that social media page, whether it's Amen. Uh, TikTok, um, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit. Uh, anytime you open up your social media page and you start researching this particular topic, you are going to get fed more of that same information. And, and pretty soon, if you're not careful, you can get into this doom loop where all of a sudden it's just horrible, horrible stuff about whatever particular issue you find upsetting, right. whether it's politics, um, the s social situation in, uh, in our country, uh, religion. stuff. Ge how that's going to bring down the globe. Yes. Yeah. Um, whether you're you're worried about inflation, recession, the end of the world, um, the solar eclipse that's happening in a few weeks, uh, wh whatever it is that you're concerned about, you're, you're going to get fed more of that because these social media uh, uh, apps and programs, they have an algorithm built into them that says, hey, listen, if this person is researching this topic, huh, maybe we should just feed them more of that. And, and I know that I've heard of variations of all that, but I think Instagram's what was like, if they watch, if you pause, if you're scrolling and you pause for two seconds, it, it, it knows that you watched whatever that is and it's going to try to serve you more of that. And that's all that you have to do. You don't sure. even have to necessarily click on it. I mean, it's right. It's crazy scary how sensitive that so, stuff is. So if you're a negative Nancy and you're worried about the end of the world, Guess what? Next time you log into that and you look at it, it's going to serve up more videos that pertain to that particular subject. If if you're a positive person, if you're a person that you know is always looking at the bright side, um, guess what's going to get fed to you next time you log into that social media app? Positive stuff, Bible verses, um, inspirational, motivational yeah. quotes, growth mindset, uh, growth mindset, you know. positivity type stuff. If if you're a person that um, digs on, you know, wrestling, guess what? You're going to get served up more wrestling videos. The, these apps are trying to capture your attention and keep you on their app for as long as possible. And so if, if you think that the U.S. economy is trash and that the dollar is going to go to zero, if you look for videos that talk about that subject, guess what? You're going to get served up more of that stuff. It's intentional. It's, it's, obvious and it's a purposeful thing that the apps do to keep you on the app to serve you up guess what ads yeah it's all about ads and viewership and keeping you on the platform and keeping you watching those videos because yes. if you're watching those videos they know oh this person watches this so we're going to serve more of that they're more likely to keep watching those and guess what it makes the ads more effective and it makes the ability for them to turn around and sell those ads to right. other companies that want to advertise because they can say look we <clears throat> we've we figured it out 
we figured out how to serve videos to these people that are customized that they're going to watch, mm -hmm. therefore by making your ad more effective. That's exactly right. Uh, I'll give you a, a personal example of that. It's nothing freaky, so don't don't think I'm going to say something weird. My wife is is looking for a poodle, and she started looking for ads for poodles for sale. And guess what? Her feed on Facebook, in, in this particular case, started to be filled with videos about people selling poodles, how awesome poodles are, toys. AI treats. pictures of, of poodles. <laughs> yes, everything that you can imagine about poodles. And it's just poodles, poodles, poodles. And in case you weren't paying attention, poodles. Enough with the poodles already. But guess what? She searched for it. So the algorithm within Facebook assumed, oh, well, if you looked up one, you might be interested in a thousand more videos about poodles. Yeah. And then she probably watched some of them, strengthening yes. the algorithm. Absolutely. That, you know. Absolutely. So it, it it's intentional. It's on purpose. You need to know that. And so you, you really have to be mindful of what it is that you're mm -hmm. looking at. Uh, because you will get served up more of that, right? Uh, whether you want to or not, and and that that's true whether it's uh, uh, you know videos about poodles or porn or uh, business articles or motivation or religion, whatever it is yeah. that you think is interesting and you look for it, the algorithm will automatically serve that up to you some more. Yeah, and I think a, a good example of this is let me see if I can get this to work. Um, and for those of you that are not on video with us, this is a should come up in just a second. A uh, picture of straight off of uh, the website for this is Department of Financial Protection and Innovation from the state of California, and it's titled "Who Should You Trust?" So it is not the state of California. But yeah, <laughs> that, that's a whole separate issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but this specifically, this is designed um, to educate the consumer about the differences between what they call licensed investment advisors or anybody that is a license, what we would call like, it, you like us, yes. right? Um, or licensed financial advisors, a bunch of different terminology you can use. Um, but that has, has, has the educational background, passed the certifications um, and, and is the, regulated and supervised right, um, by more than one organization and entity. I mean, yes. you know, we're regulated to the hilt. It's crazy. I got so many people up in my business. It's not even funny. Yeah. But, but the uh, <laughs> point here is, is that, you can clearly see, like, so the difference between that and a Finfluencer, which is what we're really talking about, doesn't really have to be a Finfluencer either. It doesn't have to be someone on social media. It can be your drunk uncle Dude, offering it can be. crypto advice. We, we, I talk about this one, too. <laughs> this is one of the things I show in the presentation. It, where does our, our personal financial habits come from? Peers, close associates, professionals, uh, salespeople, friends, teachers, parents. Parents is a big one. My drunk uncle. Let, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it was funny because I just did this presentation like uh, the week after Thanksgiving um, at a local institution here. And Thank you, it, drunk uncle. Let yeah. And I was like, man, I know that this room is just full of, of people that have got full of hot stock tips that, you know, or or crypto or whatever, whatever was and being marijuana. talked about. And yeah, yeah um, because it's the next hottest thing. But guess what? That's number one. It's word of mouth. But also the Neil deGrasse Tyson quote. Why is it that level of information that's making it to me? Well, they're wanting to share it with you because they heard it from something very similar, more than likely to what we're talking about here today. Mm -hmm. And then they're just spreading that, um, you know, to the next person over. So anyway, Wall, Wall Street bets, uh, Wall whatever. Street. <laughs> uh, so real quick, I'm going to run down this this difference here. So you can clearly see this is um, the the actual who should you trust document. And I think they did a good job of just quick little bullet points. We can get into the weeds here, but I'm not trying to do that. So if you're a licensed invest, uh, investment advisor or a financial advisor, uh, with those licenses, you must follow laws that require advertisements and product endorsements to be truthful and disclose conflicts of interest, like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. If you are a finfluencer, you do not always disclose conflicts of interest. You don't have to. There's nothing, there's no regulatory body overseeing you, making sure that you're doing that. And there's no consequences if you if you don't mention conflicts of interest. You may be compensated by the company offering the product or service, the platform on which the message appears, or an undisclosed financier. So, like, you know, the the thing on Facebook where I can earn money for me posting reels and all that kind of stuff. And if I can hack it to where more people are watching my stuff, cause I'm fear mongering and that's what get fear that, that fear is what I'm playing on. And that gets more views. And then therefore Facebook is going to be like, Hey, I see what you're doing. Do you want us to tack on some ads to this? You can earn money. That is a real thing. Y'all that yes. is a hundred percent real thing. I, a, a lot of celebrities make money 
uh, by endorsing or pitching products on their Instagram yeah, page. And, and a lot of uh, uh, celebrities have also been sued for quote unquote recommending things to people. People took action, did what they said, and they ended up losing money and they, they want those people to be responsible. And in many ways, they should be responsible. If you're going to pitch something, you should have some basis for making that recommendation and not just say blanket that it's this is good yeah. for everybody at all times in every situation. But That's more than true. likely, they're chasing a check, which sure. is why that information is making it to you. And it works so much better if you have some influence already and you're a recognized person. Right. Uh, because people, we as consumers and just frankly, lay people are a lot, a lot quicker to just trust those people because we're, Oh yeah, we know them from that. I am not a that. celebrity. So, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about me trying to make money off of you. My me either Gilbert. YouTube, so have, that make, uh, my YouTube videos or Spotify. Yeah. Uh, but if, for those of y'all listening, thank you to all, uh, you know, 50 subscribers that we have on our <laughs> YouTube page. Um, we, we really appreciate that. And, and, you know, it's interesting too, to see these, the podcasts that we've done, we've done like 350 and see which ones like get views and which ones don't, because guess what? Spotify, YouTube, they all use algorithms too. So sure if you're out there and you're, and you're, and you like what we're saying and you want to help us out, share this podcast uh, wherever you're listening to it on to like some of your friends and family, uh, you know, that would, that would help us out a lot uh, because we're honestly trying to give good, genuine investor education. And maybe we can sell some ads and make some money on yeah, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, as, long, That's as long as it's approved by our, our compliance, compliance department. department right. So uh, real quick to round this off. So number two here was um, licensed financial advisors or investment advisors work directly with clients to formulate individualized strategies. Once again, going back to what, Gilbert, what you just said uh, about how those people, most of those talking heads, they don't know who you are. They have no idea. And in fact, there's a good chance that you will never cross paths with that person. They don't have your best interests at heart because, and they can't because they don't know you. They don't know your personal financial situation. They don't know your family dynamic. They don't know where you came from. They don't know where you're trying to head. They don't, they don't, they're just trying to sell something, right? right. Um, as opposed to a influencer or someone else that is not this licensed financial professional, uh, they can produce entertainment. Love that word entertainment to generate followers, likes, shares, comments, broad appeal. Social media content is not a replacement for individualized financial advice. Ooh, I like that. They, they don't know your investment objective, your risk tolerance. They don't know that uh, you grew up in poverty and you never want to go there again. They don't right. know they don't that care. you're suffering from uh, MS and that you need to safeguard your uh, money that you have yeah. to last for the rest of your well, life. You you have a disability and you got elderly parents that you're going to have to care for. And then that, you know, and you might have to be the, the one that's helping support them financially and, and all these like little things, right. Yes. That get bolted into your individualized situation. So, uh, they don't know any of that. Right. right. So I want to say this one more time, broad appeal, social media content is not a replacement for individualized financial advice. Love that. Okay. And then, uh, lastly, uh, advisors, licensed financial professionals must follow consumer protection laws that protect you as the consumer from frauds and scams, must pass professional exams and keep informed of emerging products and services. We have continuing education for that. I had to put in God knows how many hours to pass that test. I learned a ton. I actually bought two study programs when I did it just to like, I overdid it a little bit. You overachiever. Um, I did. I passed with like <laughs> flying colors. I got like a 95 or something on my exam and it was just like a pass or fail thing. We, but we, we won't put my uh, score because number one, I don't remember. And number two, I know there. it wasn't that great. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but the point is, is that is, but I'm that, still a, but I'm still a licensed financial advisor. That's right. No and, and <laughs> it, well, and, and there's so much more that comes at like with most things, it's like going to college, like you go and learn stuff out of the book. And that doesn't mean Jack until you get into the real world and Amen, start seeing brother. how, how, how it, plays out in real I know, life. I know plenty of people with college degrees, multiple college degrees, and they're dumber than a box of rocks. That's right. Because you can talk about a tree all day long and describe it, and I can give you the most colorful, beautiful language to describe this tree, and you've never seen one, and you walk outside, and if you can't connect what I just told you in words to what you're seeing in front of you as a tree, you'll never know that that's a tree, and there's a big gap there. So uh, anyway, so I think that 
uh hopefully that that was deep man that was it was it that deep? was deep okay. that was pretty cool actually it, was it? <laughs> i'm gonna okay. have to use that okay <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so so uh, hopefully that drives the point home of what we're trying to get across today i think that we see it so much um that frankly i both of us could get on a soapbox about it i we do presentations about it um, talk to people about it all the time because it never fails. We can even talk till we're blue in the face and have these conversations mm -hmm. with people and they will come back to us with some of the same content. It's just reworded, repackaged. Someone else is saying the same thing in a different manner. Uh, so, so anyway, so th that it, this is something that's near and dear to our hearts because we see it so much. And frankly, when we see people, um, especially people like uh, maybe like elderly people, you know, that are a little more vulnerable or gullible um, that to, you know, hearing this stuff and being influenced by it uh, and being inundated with it, 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 to be honest, it kind of pisses me off because it's like, that's not how, like, if that was your mom or your dad or your grandparents or your loved one, you would not want them to spend their time staying up at night, worrying about this crap that that's getting fed to them off the internet from a bunch of people that frankly don't know what the hell they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So anyway, okay. Uh, any parting, parting thoughts? You know, I'll, I'll share share with you one last thing. Uh, there's a very popular ad out there, and this is one that I get fed to quite a bit from people. Hey, tell me about this company that runs ads on TV all the time. Uh, I won't I won't share the name because I think I'll just have to say the tagline, and you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, we do better when our customers do better. That that's a that's a line that I hear all the time from people. Tell me about this company. We do better when our customers do better. If you listen to that, you you kind of it it sounds like they only make money when their customers make money. That is not accurate. What they're saying is that they charge you a management fee so that as your account grows in value, they charge a uh, they make more money because their management fee is charged on a higher balance. But what they don't tell you uh, and and I'm I'm pointing this out because even when you are talking to people that are licensed, regulated, you you still have to question. Okay, what's the motivation here, and how does this work? Uh, what they don't tell you in that ad is that guess what? When their clients do poorly, they do poorly too. But that doesn't mean they don't charge you a fee. It just means that they charge you a fee on a smaller balance. They still make money. They will always make money in good times and bad times. It's you, the customer, that will make less money uh, and, and feels the impact of that. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they don't charge you only when they make money. It just means that they make more money. As, the, as their ad is truthfully saying, we do better when our customers do better. That is true. What the part they leave out is, we do okay when our customers do poorly. <laughs> <laughs> but of course that doesn't have the same ring to it as we do better when our right. customers do better because it's an ad because right? it's an ad and oh. you have to sit there and look at that and say well oh and and you uh, maybe people would or wouldn't be surprised but i am surprised about how many people have never really stopped to consider what that statement means it doesn't mean what you think it does it just means they're giving you the straight bottom line fact, they do do better when their customers do better. But that doesn't mean that's the whole story. It's it's yeah. only part of the truth. Um, it, it's like in court when they tell you, you mm. know, you got to tell the truth, uh, nothing but the truth. Uh, what is it? Uh, the whole truth. The whole truth. Those three things. Yeah. No, the whole truth, um, nothing but the truth. And, you know, you, you, can, you can tell the truth, quote unquote, without telling the whole truth. Um, and, and that's really what those yeah. ads are. And a lot of ads do that. They tell you the truth. They are not lying to you, but what they're not telling you is the whole truth. And, and it's important for you, the customer, to always know the whole truth. When yeah. you work with a financial advisor uh, like me and Andrew, we have to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us God. Yeah. We have to. We Otherwise, do. we're in trouble. Sure. Um, you you don't always get that when you listen to ads because in an ad, it, that's not always readily apparent. That's right. 
wonderful, wonderful time today. Wonderful discussion. Thank you for being here, Gilbert. Thank you guys for tuning in. That I enjoyed was, it. I don't know if everybody else. I know. Did. <laughs> I did too. I did too. That's because we were on our soapbox. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget, share our content, interact with us. It helps other people find the show. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And that is it for today. We will catch you back here next time. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Next Financial Group, member FINRA, SIPC. Texas Hill Country Advisors is not an affiliate of Next Financial Group. This material is not intended as an offer or solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security or other financial instrument. Past performance does not guarantee future performance. All the views expressed are those of Andrew Gay and Gilbert Pies and Texas Hill Country Advisors and not those of Next Financial Group. The S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index composed of common stocks of 500 leading companies and leading industries of the U.S. economy. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is a price weighted index of 30 actively traded blue chip stocks.